good morning students after devoting a fair amount of time in discussing secondary storage devices rather we have discussed very much in detail about the different types of software and operating system specifically we have discussed in the last lecture so now we are shifting from software to some basic components of computer or to be more specific i should say we are shifting from software to hardware in today's class and memory unit we will be discussing in detail so before starting memory units before starting different storage devices let's know the different components of computers which we supposed to interact with we all must be knowing that one of the most important component of computer system is a device through which we support we provide input to the computer it can be mouse it can be keyboard it can be any other input device and through this input device we send these informations to central processing unit which comprises control unit and arithmetic and logic unit we know that control unit is the nervous system of computer that controls all over the activities like from where input is supposed to be accepted after accepting the input whether this information or the data is supposed to be sent to memory or whether it is sent to arithmetic and logic unit or after processing whether this information is handed over to some output device so apart from control unit and arithmetic and logic unit two or three special uh, units it is also using which is we all must be aware is memory first where data resides a special type of memory which is known as cache memory and some internal or special purpose processors or registers this is output device or output unit where finally output is supposed to be sent data may be stored for future reference in some secondary storage device it can be taken back whenever it is needed and the portion the unit which controlling all over this operation is communicating or communication device among all these components what we are discussing today is memory maybe cache or maybe internal special purpose registers so start with storage unit a unit that holds the data that holds the instructions or program which are entered through keyboard or through some any other input device which are supposed to be processed this is also the unit which preserves the intermediate results which has been processed the unit which stores the data before it is handed over to output device or to secondary storage device or it also stores the data for later use so memory basically or the storage unit use for three purposes to accept the input whatever input you have accepted it is supposed to be uh, stored in primary memory whatever program is entered it is supposed to be stored in primary memory whatever uh, intermediate results has been processed whatever result has been processed is supposed to be stored in primary memory and after the data is being manipulated after the program is executed the final result is also stored before it is supposed to be handed over to output unit they may be used for some later use maybe you are using this data once again or the, the data may be stored in some secondary storage device whatever storage device without knowing it is primary memory or secondary memory whatever uh, storage device we are using we can broadly classify them into two major types first type of storage unit we call as primary storage and the second type is secondary storage as is clear by its name the type of memory which is directly 
being used by CPU is primary storage obviously and secondary storage is the storage which holds the data for permanent use for the purpose of making backup for the purpose of storing it so that it can be used later on is uh, considered to be secondary storage maybe your pen drive maybe your hard disk it may be CDs etc so the basic difference between these two type of memory is uh, the data is retained prior primary memory till the power is on or uh, some more data has occupied its place but this unit will retain the data even after power is off. If we talk about memory regardless to primary or secondary then we can consider it as a block of space which is divided into number of cells. Memory is a big block which is divided into number of cell. So we can call memory as a collection of cell and each cell is having a unique address to identify it like if I say what the, the address of this unit then obviously it must be having some unique address so that it can directly be approached this place can directly be approached so first of all it is collection of cell secondly in a single cell generally a single character is being stored single character is being stored that means a single byte is stored or if I say a single character equals to single byte then I'll not be wrong okay I'm asking a question to you if I ask how many bytes are there in secondary storage then your answer must be count the number of characters 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 then space 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 this will take 17 what bytes or 17 liters we have discussed by directly but we know that the smallest measuring unit in which we can measure the storage capacity of any storage media is known as bit so bit is the smallest unit which is known as binary digit a bits together forms one byte so in a single byte how many bits are there these are 18 numbers and uh, the collection of four bits is known as nibble after byte it will be uh, 1024 bytes will form a single kilobyte 1024 kb will form 1 megabyte 1024 megabyte will form 1 gigabyte and so on 1024 GB will form 1 TB and the list is long 1024 petabyte will form exabyte and 1024 exabyte will form zettabyte and so on after discussing different measuring units in which we can measure the storage capacity of any storage device uh, let's discuss different type of storage units or different types of memory see this is CPU if data is supposed to be stored or data is supposed to be used either it may be stored sometimes in resistors which CPU will be having certain number of registers with it then the data may be searched by CPU from cache memory or it may be taken from or it may be stored to primary memory cache memory can sakte hai spo, and it can be termed as main memory or primary memory and then here it is in CPU will take some data CPU will process some data CPU may interact with cache memory or main memory after processing it the information is to be sent to some output device input 
output device, it may be to secondary storage, it may be to monitor or printer, etc. So, this is considered to be the hierarchy of memory or levels of memory. What I mean, uh, this is closer to CPU. Seeing its place, you can uh, think the association with CPU. Like it is closer to CPU, obviously CPU will use them directly to increase its speed. Then cache memory is supposed to be used. If data is not there in cache, then main memory will be used. I am talking again and again about a type of memory with the name cache memory, but we don't know what this cache is because we know primary memory, we know secondary memory. From where this concept of cache memory arise? I will be discussing it little later, but before that, let us know that computer user uses lots of memory especially that is very fast and expensive, inexpensive. But this demand is always not possible to satisfy. Why? Because if we talk about very fast memory, then it will not be cheap. If we take the memory which is very cheap, then it may not be very fast. So there must be some compromise which is supposed to be maintained. So let us discuss the hierarchy of different types of memory then we will be switching to cache memory what we mean by cache memory and where it is used so first of all consider the hierarchy or the different levels of memory and then we will be shifting to their cost and comparative studies at the top level it is internal processors memory then main memory and then secondary storage at the bottom before discussing a lot something is very much clear to me that means as the size of triangle increases or decreases so is true with the size of memory it is obviously of some amount it is more than that and it is the largest one in size I am not talking about the, in terms of cost and speed. So let us have different examples for these internal processor memory. I will be starting with in registers, then cache, main memory later on example is primary memory or random access memory or main memory and in secondary storage different sec storage devices like magnetic tape disk, floppy disk, CDs, pen drives, etc. are being used. If we move from top to bottom, then the cost will be reducing. The cost of internal memory is more in comparison to secondary storage. The space also more if we move from top to bottom, it is of very limited amount of memory. It is in comparison to internal memory, it is more, but in comparison to secondary memory, it is less. But if I say in terms of speed, then obviously internal processors or primary memory are fastest, faster memory respectively. And it is the slowest one in these three. Right, three parameters we have discussed here, but if, if we want to measure the performance of different types of memory, then what could be our evaluation criteria, storage evaluation criteria, how we can evaluate these memories. The first criteria is storage capacity. I'm comparing these memories in terms of the amount of data it is supposed to be stored. Uh, we have just discussed it as uh, the registers are of very limited size. They may be one byte or at maximum they may be of two bytes long. These are used by CPU for temporary use for storing the intermediate results of some mathematical equations and obviously it can store the integer values. But 
the data is supposed to be fetched from primary memory or more specifically it is random access memory from memory the time taken by cpu is more so T cpu uses a special kind of memory which is cache memory obviously the size of cache is less in comparison to random access memory and this is the highest memory which is used by cpu directly secondary storage can't be used cpu until unless the data is fetched to primary memory so in terms of storage capacity it can store more data it can store less data and so on then the next parameter is how the data is accessed by access mode i means whether i can access the data from any place with same amount of time that means whether i am able to access the data and random mode or data can also be accessed sequentially that means one after another or i may be using mixed mode neither it is random nor it is sequential but it is known as direct because it is combination of both sequential as well as random sometimes we need the data is at random the data can be fetched any time sometimes it is the that we want to access the data one after another then the mode we will be using is direct obviously the mechanism which is used in magnetic disk is uh, direct whereas magnetic tape access the data sequentially and random access is the method which is used in random accessing memory right then third parameter is access time to access the data what is the time between the request is being made for reading or writing and the requesting is being completed this is known as access time obviously we prefer that minimum amount of time is supposed to be taken then only i'll preferring that particular storage device another parameter could be its physical characteristic physical characteristic is it can be magnetic it can be electronic it can be electrical it can be optical what mechanism i am using or my device is using to get the data to store the data obviously data is represented in the form of zero and one so which is the media which is the physical characteristic of the media through which i am retaining the data from any secondary storage it can be up through optical technique it can be through electrical and so on magnetic technique also and last is permanence of storage how long the data can be stored in a storage unit whether it is uh, erased as i switch off the power or it can be retained after the power is off obviously primary memory is non permanence in nature and secondary storage are of permanent type i'll be using any uh, what type of storage i am using it uh, entirely depends upon the parameter which i am supposed to satisfy now come to cache memory cache can be taken as cache in hand so cache memory is the fastest memory after registers it is obviously slower than cpu registers so cache memory obviously small in size and it is placed between cpu and main memory so place of uh, cache is if we, i call it cpu if i call it main memory so cache will be here when data is supposed to be accessed first of all it is checked in cache memory if it is there obviously we will hit the data otherwise data again is to be surged in main memory then it is to be fetched in cache and accessed today primary memory is our main concern of discussion so i'll be starting with different types of memories obviously specifically primary memory in detail primary memories are basically of two type random access memory and 
read only memory ram and rom random access memory is volatile in nature by volatile i mean that the data will be over the data will get erased with power off if i switch off the power data will not longer be there and if no space is there data will be written back so new data will come new data will take the place of the older one so the data will not be get taking back but in read only memory it is non volatile in nature data will be stored permanently even after the power is off a computer is using small amount of data which is of permanent in nature and it is stored in rom chip cpu access these locations by using cells unique addresses which we call cell classification of memory which can be divided into primary memory and secondary memory i am leaving secondary memory here only because it will be taken in another class and emphasizing primary memory in detail so primary memory can broadly be divided into two one is volatile memory and another is non volatile that means permanent type of memory volatile can be either your registers it can be cache memory and volatile memory can be random access memory wherein non volatile memory we will be putting read only memory registers we have already discussed used by cpu directly cache is a special type of memory which is placed between cpu and main memory so let it is time to discuss random access memory some thing in detail random access memory is the memory where you store your data where you store the program and it can be broadly classified into two major group one type of primary memory or random access memory is known as a static memory ram in short we can say it is sram and another is known as dynamic ram or d ram let me complete the diagram at first then we will be discussing something more rom can also be of two type prom and e prom which can be of three type it can be uv prom it can be e e prom and it can be flash rom yes starting with ram and rom rom is non volatile it is volatile ram can be uh, static ram dynamic ram what is the basic difference between these static and dynamic ram is the static ram will retain the data till the power is off but in case of dynamic ram we always have to refresh the data to be stay in memory that means once the data is stored in dynamic ram it will definitely be faded away very fast uh, the speed the time number of times could be 15 or more times in a second means more than 15 times you have to refresh the data if you want to stay it in ram dynamic ram but in a static ram no need to be refreshed again and again why we use the static ram 
or why we use dynamic RAM if the data is erased obviously the static RAM is sparse in nature it is dense in nature that means more amount of data can be stored in DRAM but less amount of data is supposed to be stored in static RAM number one number two it is large in size uh, just I told that it is sparse that means it is large in size so it cannot be used for to, uh, to store the data which is large amount which is needing large amount of space no we cannot use it number one number two it is expensive because less data can be stored in a chip in comparison to dynamic RAM and it uses more power it generates more heat too but in case of dynamic RAM it needs to be refreshed periodically it is smaller in size it can store more amount of data less power it generates but we use this then also we use this memory because this memory is faster in comparison to dynamic RAM so in cache we are using static RAM but in prime RAM random access memory in primary memory we are using DRAM let's discuss what we mean by ROM random access memory random access memory uh, actually stores the special program which always being needed by a computer which this is known as booting sequence bootstrap loader is the program which we store in ROM so it is pre-written supplied by manufacturer once the, they has been written they cannot be erased sometimes this may create a problem to us what type of problem it may create that means once the data is loaded it cannot be erased that means new chip we have to purchase we have to install in our computer if you want to customize these ROM according to the company's requirement then no way out because they are preloaded pre-installed pre taking this problem into mind another type of is also there in market with the name programmable read only memory that means the type of ROM which can be programmed but again the problem is same once it is programmed the data cannot be erased we have to throw it away purchase new blank ROM and we can use it we now need such type of RAM from which we can erase the data as well by using special technique so the technique which is most commonly in used is data can be erased by passing ultraviolet rays but the problem with this is the, the entire ROM is being erased the data which is written on this ROM is erased by passing through ultraviolet rays and if the level of heat increases the chip may not be usable then we are needing a special type of ROM in which in the place of erasing the entire ROM bit by bit data should be erased this is electrically erasable programmable read only memory the data can be erased by passing some electric to it at a specific level and it is not needed that entire data sometimes we are uh, we want to erase it may be our demand that we want to erase specific data so this technique is useful in comparison to ultraviolet rays which erases the complete ROM it erases bit by bit so if some small amount of data is supposed to be erased this technique is good and the now new advancement is flash ROM in place of taking byte by byte bit by bit we what we want we want to erase the block of data flash flash is this technique is nowadays being used in digital cameras or digital devices this is all for now today we have discussed primary memory in the next class we will be discussing the detailed discussion about secondary storage memories that may be hard disk, it may be pen drive, what are their physical characteristics, etc.